Come on, everybody, clap your hands. I want to rock and roll all night. Party every day. I want to rock and roll all night. Party every day. Hey, how you doing? Justin here with the rock and roll anthem, rock and roll all night and party every day, of course, by Kiss. Uh, I so wish I'd done some makeup and stuff for this because that would have been really funny, but I don't, just don't have time to uh, put it all on and take it all off again. So you got me in my plain glad rags. Um, crack and tune, lots of different ways of playing this one. You can go from like real simple chords. You can add in a little bit of kind of 12 bar blues rock and roll for those of you that are my beginner's course uh, and kind of familiar with your that kind of thing you can incorporate in. You can also do it in open tuning, and because there's two guitars in the band, I'm pretty sure one is doing the kind of simpler open chord thing, and the other guy, I don't know which way around it is, I haven't been able to spot it on videos yet, uh, is doing the open G one. So I'm gonna teach you first of all a kind of a, a hybrid version of the two. So you can kind of play, if you like, what sounds like all of the parts on one guitar part, and then I'll kind of break it down for you a bit. So let's get to a close up and check out how to do that. Okay, so this is the kind of the main riff thing. Uh, what we're doing is barring with the first finger at the seventh fret strings uh, four, three, and two, right? Now, if you're gonna do this kind of riff, especially with distortion, you need to be kind of lifting up your first finger a little bit to mute the thinner string, because that really needs to be muted. You also need to use the tip of your finger to mute the fifth string, and you probably wanna get your thumb over to mute the thicker string. So, you if I'm strumming all of the strings, I'm actually only getting muted, muted, note, 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 muted. So that's the first thing you want to kind of figure out. It's take a little bit of practice to get your fingers in the right spot, but it's uh, not too difficult once you figure it out. So to get the kind of riff, you're going to put your second finger down in the eighth fret of the second string and your third finger down in the ninth fret of the fourth string. So you end up with nothing, nothing, nine, seven, eight, nothing. And then you're going to put it down, so one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and... Just turn the distortion down a little bit, uh, the volume to get the distortion a little bit cleaner again. One, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and... Okay, so it's just really making sure you get that count right, so it's one, nothing on beat one, and then the, this is actually a G chord. When you put these two fingers out, it's actually part of a kind of a, a C-shaped bar chord, really, is, is what's going on here. But we're just playing those strings two, three, and four. Uh, so that's happening on, that G is happening on one, two, three, and four. One, we lift off those fingers and it becomes a D chord, part of that D bar chord shape there. So one, two, three, and four. One, two, three. Last part, one, G, three, and. and we lift it off for the and after three. One more time real slow. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and. Okay, so that's the kind of the main riff. Now, when it comes to the chords, uh, there's lots of different kind of versions of these guys playing it live. So. The first thing you're going to hear is chords just being played on the beat and sustained. Most of the chords, however, are pushed, which means they change on the beat and after four, so just before the bar. So you'd have one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one.
So the regular, I'm just playing kind of regular A. I'm kind of trying not to hit that second string too much. You can hit it, it's not uh, an out of tune note, but it's kind of better not to. With the E, just using my first finger to cover the second fret of the fifth and fourth strings. So it's just like an E5 power chord, really, is what we're after. And the same with the D. I'm using my first and third fingers, just making a regular D. Sometimes I use my first and second fingers, as I'm going to show you in a second, to kind of rock and roll it up a, a bit. Maybe it's rock and roll all night, we may as well rock it up, hey? So, uh, once you've got those basic chords, if you want to start adding in a little bit of the third finger action, just like you would on a regular 12 bar, doing this kind of... You know, it's that kind of thing. Third fret going two frets further up the neck than the first finger. So if you're doing that, now this riff, three, four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one. You don't have to do it exactly that rhythm. That's kind of a an approximate blend of the two parts, you know. And if you've got a bit of you know, your kind of fancy 12-bar blues, like you can start to add that sort of stuff in as well to have a here, little timer. Now, if you know it, you could also play D up here. So this is just like playing a kind of a D power chord. Nothing, five, seven, seven. Just those strings is what we're after. And little finger's going to reach up and play the uh, ninth fret of the fourth string. There's the E one, so D. Quite a few different ways of playing that. So that's all of the verse sequence there is just going, A you show us every E you've got. A you keep on dancing and the E gets hot. B you drive us, E will drive you D riff. Okay, now the other part we need to get down is the pre chorus. Now that's an F chord to a G chord and it's played up here. Keep on shouting, keep on shouting tail as well so we're going right up to the uh, fifth string root on the fifth strings uh, eighth fret for the F again you can put in the little if you want but you don't have to you could just or and just there on beat one try and keep the chord pressed and kind of slide it down and you got the little chance to ask your audience to clap their hands. Uh, and then we're into the chorus. So, Now they're pushed again. It's important to get those pushes on the D and the A, actually. So, three, four. Uh, rock and roll on Often that's coming on beat two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. It's kind of, and often it's just a big sustained chord. You don't have to do the rock and roll on the A. Most times on the record, it's just played the ones through. So I, I want to rock and roll all night. We party every day. I want to rock and roll. Now you can do that rock and roll thing down here on the D, 
either using your first and third finger and using your little finger to or you can use first and second finger and use your third finger to, doesn't really matter which one you do I kind of changes depending on uh, what mood I'm in I guess uh, so the chorus if you're going to do open position now I'm pretty sure most of the record is down picks that's what it sounds like and that's what it looks like from uh, videos I've seen sometimes I'm using down and up like Sometimes I'm mixing it up. Really not so important. As long as you got your rhythm right, whether you're using down and up picks, I don't think is going to be a big deal at all. If you wanted a kind of a set strumming pattern for it using down and up strums, this wouldn't be a bad start to have one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four. strum on the and after four where the chord is pushed. So I'm pretty sure one of the guitars on the record is in open G tuning. Now to get to open G tuning you need to tune your thinnest string down to the note D. So that's an E at the moment. The open fourth string is the note D. So play the open D and tune your E string down so it's an octave above it. Here's the same note there. And then the A needs to go down to a G, so we're going to play the fifth string and tune it down so it's an octave lower than that G string, the open third string. Then we've got open G. Now, normally the thicker string has got to get tuned down to a D as well, but we're not really going to be using that thicker string. If any of you wondered why Keith Richards played his famous five string Telecaster, it's because the root note in open G string is on the fifth string and the sixth string just tends to get away in the way a lot uh, for this kind of riffing anyway. So um, once you do that, that little riff that we learned at the beginning, to get it now we can bar the whole thinnest five strings because that chord is now a D chord. Not playing the thickest string, right? The thickest string will sound horrible. So just straight bar on the seventh fret. And now if we put that in that same shape that we did before, that's pretty sure, I'm damn sure that's what's on the record. But of course now you've got to change the other chords, but luckily for you they're really simple. A is just a bar at the second fret. E is a bar at the ninth fret. A is a bar at the second fret. E is a bar at the ninth fret. D is about the seventh fret, and E is about the ninth fret. Can't get much simpler than that. So, only the cool thing is that this little riff gets used in front of any of the chords, and it sounds cool. So, A. I'm sure some of you notice this is pretty stonesy sounding, and that's uh, they were the, probably the biggest band to use this kind of open G riff thing. There's loads of stone songs that uh, use that that I'm not going to go into because they've got nasty lawyers. But uh, yeah, it's a cool little kind of trick to uh, check out. Is this open G? 
Sounds great, you know, that the idea, especially having two guitars, one in open G doing these kind of riffs and the other one doing the open chord rock and roll thing. You know, those two together sound wicked. This is definitely a song to get the party started and I'm sure you're going to have a load of fun playing it. Um, it's not particularly difficult and like I said, there's loads of kind of ways of doing it. So uh, it's kind of a fun song to explore a little bit. Again, there's no substitute like listening to the original recording, you know, check out some live ones, check out the original ones, see if you can kind of pick up that groove on it because exactly where the accents are and all of that sort of stuff is, you know, I could explain it to you and write all the counts out, but it's just far easier and better to learn it using your ears, you know. We listen to music, ears are pretty important, so, uh, you know, just spend a little bit of time listening to the tune. I've definitely given you all of the bits there, so between listening to the song a lot and, and what I've given you, you should have no trouble playing this one, and it's loads of fun. I'll see you for another lesson or song very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.